Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audio download and a 30-day trial at www.audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Episode 27, The Tinkerer and Other Makers. Hi. This week on the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, we'll not be looking at just one character, but we're going to look at three characters. Two are villains, and one as well, he's just a tailor, and each comes from their own different comic book universe. Today we'll be looking and learning about the Tinkerer from Marvel U, Arthur Rosebaum from Image, and finally Paul Gamby from the DCU, who designs most of the costumes for Flash's rogues gallery. And just what do all these characters have in common? Well, they all either make gadgets or suits for several characters, both good or bad, in their comic book universes. Now, I've always liked the idea of these characters. You know, ones on the periphery that, for the most part, aren't villains or heroes, but they use their amazing skills to support them. So let's take a look at the first character, Phineas Mason, a.k.a. The Tinkerer. Now we're going to be seeing a lot of this character in the near future with the new Spider-Man Homecoming movie. Now, this character, you know, he did a little stint as an actual villain, not just sort of making things for villains, but trying to be a villain himself. And he was created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko way back in 1963, and he actually appeared in Amazing Spider-Man issue number two. So he has been around a long time. And I didn't realize that the character had been around that long. I mean, Spider-Man 2, that's, you know, that's as far back in Spider-Man history as you can go almost. Now, he is an incredible inventor, and he's able to create you know, just about anything. All these sort of fantastic machines, suits, and weapons that the baddies use in the Marvel U. So he doesn't usually, and he might have every once in a while if it suited his own uh, needs, created something for a hero, but he mostly makes things for the villains in the Marvel U. Now, he doesn't have any powers, but he is able to create things that are just incredible. So sometimes it might be, it's even hinted that he might have some sort of meta ability to build. So in his first appearance, he is actually committing crimes and not just sitting on the sidelines. And he's running a crew of thieves, and they're bugging offices of political figures and using it to blackmail. So he's, you know, it's not like he's not a a strong man or anything, but he's uh, doing, you know, white collar things and blackmail, stuff like that. But the odd thing is about this crew and about what he's doing is they're all uh, dressed up like aliens, these green aliens. And I've got a lot of picks over at heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com over on the episode page. The post for this is going to be called the tinkerer and other makers. So look for that post and you can see all these really fun pictures. Now that's the thing. They're all wearing these alien masks. So, you know, when Peter uh, Parker comes in there, Spider-Man comes in, he's wondering, are these aliens? What is going on here? Um, And in the end, of course, he, you know, Spider-Man thwarts, the Tinkerer, and uh, beats him. But here's, here's the thing. The Tinker gets away. In, you know, in the smoky, you know, ship building thing that he had built, uh, Peter um, can't find him. He's like, where is the Tinkerer? And what's left behind and what the Tinker has left behind is an actual mask of himself. So it looks like the Tinkerer's face. And this leaves Spidey to wonder, like, what's going on? Is the Tinkerer an alien? Why? What is this mask? Of course, it was just a ruse by the Tinkerer to sort of screw with his head. Um, he is a human, and he is not a little green man from Mars. But Phineas decides he really doesn't want to do this, you know, active, I'll call it an active criminal thing. He still does every once in a while. But for the most part now, what he does is he sets up a little shop, a workshop that he disguises as an ordinary radio repair shop. And that's where he has his base to make all of these you know, nasty suits and weapon systems and things for all the baddies of the MCU. So just what has he built for the villains of the Marvel U? Let's take a look at just a short list. How about Mysterio's suit? The Vulture suit. And of course, we're going to be seeing the Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming. And that's, of course, why the Tinker is in it. So that's really going to be interesting that they've got these characters together. Scorpion's tail. 
Now, we talked a little bit about this character a couple shows back, Rocket Racer. He built his rocket-powered skateboard. He also built Big Wheels Wheel that we've talked about in that podcast as well. Diamondbacks uh, Throwing Stars. And at one point, Spidey even had to recruit him to rebuild his Spidey Mobile. Now, I should do a show just on the Spidey Mobile because I love that thing. And so that's just an abbreviated list of some of the things that the Tinkerer has created in the Marvel U, making him one of the original makers of comics. One thing that's also neat about the Tinkerer is he's not just a genius when it comes to creating things. He's a very shrewd businessman. Now, for example, when Killer Shriek showed up to pick up his new weapons, you know, his new weapon system in his suit, he, of course, decided he didn't want to pay. Now, you've got to think this is going to happen. You're making deadly weapons for bad people. So what do you have as a backup in case something like this happens? So Shriek pointed his gauntlets at Phineas and fired. Well, this is what he does. He builds something in so that uh, if he's about to be fired on or if the weapon's going to be used on him, they actually explode and or backfire. So that's what happened. They worked for Shriek, but they worked uh, not in the way he was hoping, and they fired backwards. They backfired and knocked him out cold. So the Tinkerer makes sure he builds safeguards into all his weapons so they can't be used on him. And let's take a quick break and get a word in from our sponsor. For you, the listeners of the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now, I've been using these guys for a while. You know, I've got a decent commute, so I love to listen to audiobooks. And I've been talking about this one a lot, and I actually... I actually just listened to it again. Maybe not the whole thing, but I definitely listened to pieces. And since we're talking about a a Marvel builder first, Marvel maker first, uh, I could definitely suggest you listening to Marvel Comics, The Untold Story. It is just, uh, it's fascinating. Some of it's heartbreaking to hear, you know, maybe how some of your your idols uh, and your childhood idols growing up what they were doing and what they were thinking when they were creating the things that you were you were reading. But it is just an awesome book. So head over to Audible. And of course, if you uh, use the link that I'm going to give you in a second, you can download this audiobook for free. So here you go. To download your free audiobook, go to audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks for your free audiobook and your free 30-day trial. Now back to the show. So the next character in our little maker fair is Arthur Rosebaum from the Image Universe. And he's, you know, mostly uh, I see him in the uh, the Invincible side of the Image Universe. And he was created like Invincible by Robert Kirkman and Bill Crabtree. And he first appears in Invincible number one back in 2003. Now, Art is more of a tailor, really, Uh, and he's actually just a regular tailor, but he also has a side business in his building in the basement. And he doesn't really build gadgets and whatnot. I think he does do some accessories, but he is mostly a tailor who constructs suits that can withstand the damage that a super will inflict on them. And so it's not so much he isn't going to make like... um, a ray gun, or he isn't going to make some kind of anti-gravity boots. Uh, although I think he might have, now that I remember some of the characters in the Guardians of the uh, Globe. But mostly what we see him is making suits. Now, there's not a lot we really learn about Art. You know, he's usually on the periphery. We see him in a few issues here or there. But he's definitely someone that is trusted by all the heroes in the Invincible universe. And, you know, he works on their suits. He knows who they are. He sees them in their civvies. I mean, we first see our, in the first issue of Invincible, where Nolan Grayson, a.k.a. Omni-Man, and his son, Mark, a.k.a. Invincible, go there to get a suit when Mark's powers manifest. So Mark's powers manifest. He decides he is going to go out there and fight crime. He does a little makeshift suit out of like a handkerchief and some shirts and a weird shirt and stuff. And again, the page for this is up over at the site, heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com. It's pretty funny. And when his dad sees him in this getup, he says, I need you to take you over to arts. So they go over there and art goes ahead and makes him this really awesome suit. I love 
invincible suit. Now, we don't see Art a lot in the comic. He pops up every once in a while when someone needs a new suit or Marx is trying out a new look. But we actually now have learned in some of the more uh, recent issues that he is actually dating Mark's mom. So, you know, he's got some, you know, serious guts there because he's dating Omni-Man's ex-wife. And if you've read Invincible, you can learn, you've learned that he's from a warlike race, even though he's mellowed, but he is, you know, their race, the, the Vilsramites are, you know, pretty much the most powerful race in the universe. So he's got a set on him if he's going to go ahead and date the ex-wife of that man. Now, lastly, we're going to take a look at Paul Gamby from the DCU, who we see mostly in Flash comics. He first appeared in Flash 141 and was created by John Broom and the amazing Carmine Infantino. Now, this was a bit tricky for me to find uh, a maker in the DCU that creates suits and weapons for several baddies. You know, like the Tinkerer, he does it for, uh, you know, pretty much everyone in the Marvel U. Yes, uh, Arthur Rosenbaum, um, a lot of people in the the Image universe. And I couldn't find like one sort of maker that DC had. You know, I was thinking about uh, Lucius Fox, but he makes things mostly for Batman and the Bat family. So I actually posted something over uh, on Facebook and asked, you know, who's a prolific, uh, prolific maker in the DCU? And Shazam, someone said, do Paul Gamby. So like art over an Invincible, Paul is a tailor by trade, and he creates and maintains the uniforms of many of Flash's rogues gallery. In his first appearance, he is discovered by Flash totally by accident. While fighting the top, the Flash finds a boy who is delivering a package. This is after the fight. And when he looks in the box and it's a little bit opened, he sees it as a replacement top costume, which is all wacky. It's this green and black. It's kind of neat. So he asks the boy where he got the package and is told that the tailor, Paul Gamby, asked him to deliver it to the uh, address. So the Flash decides, I need to investigate this. If this tailor is handing this kid a costume for the top, what's going on here? So the Flash uh, goes undercover to Gamby's shop. He's sort of looking like a thug. So there he asks Gamby to make him a supervillain suit. But Gamby and the top realize that something's up, that uh, this person isn't on the up and up. So they actually make something to try to trap the Flash. And of course, this doesn't work. Uh, And Gamby is sent to prison. Now, you don't see Gamby much here and there. And again, where he mostly pops up, where we sort of, he's in the comic and we see him, is in Final Crisis, when the new rogues beat Gamby to an inch of his life, uh, leaving him near death in his own shop. Now, of all the makers, I have to say that Gamby has the saddest arc, whereas Art is living a pretty good life, and the Tinker is still around, and he's building things for villains, and, you know, he's yes, he's a bad person, but he's, you know, he's got his own thing going on, and he's actually, of course, now going to be in Spider-Man Homecoming, so that's pretty cool. And um, and um, he's actually going to be played by Michael Chernus, I think that's how you say that. And I'm assuming that he's going to be the one we see making the Vulture super suit and gear. And I have to tell you, I can't wait to see this movie. Michael Keaton, uh, he looks incredible. He looks great in that suit. He is just going to be a fantastic Vulture. I mean, I haven't heard anybody complaining about this casting. It's just, I can't wait. I can't wait. Now, working on this episode, I actually got an idea for another show, which is always nice. Now, I think I'll start working on a show where I highlight and talk about actual heroes, villains, and sidekicks that make their own gear. So, for example, Tony Stark, uh, or even Spider-Man, you know, the uh, the web shooters. So, not just that they... Um, you know, actually, you know, I could, I was going to say Captain America, but he didn't make that shield. But these are heroes, villains, or sidekicks that fashion their own suits and or equipment. So I think I'm going to start working on a few of those shows. Well, I want to thank you for listening to the show this week. Head over to the site and check out the post for this show over at heroesvillainsandsidekicks.com. And if you go to the episodes page, you could see the post. It'll be called The Tinkerer and Other Makers. It's episode 27. And you can see all the photos and video clips that I put in there to see some of these wacky costumes and things. Now, you can listen to the show there, but better yet, have it, head over to iTunes and subscribe. And when you're there, 
please leave a review. It helps us move up the rankings and that helps other people know about us. We're getting some reviews over there, but we can always use more. Also, I am super excited. Someone has finally used the little record button to put in a message on who they want to hear in the show. Now, I already had the show ready to go, so I didn't I didn't use their um, character yet. So that is actually going to be next week's show. And I'm really excited because I'm going to be able to play this person's message. And uh, it was fun. So maybe if you guys hear it and you'll uh, be on the show, you'll try it too. So what you do is you go over to the heroes, villains and sidekicks.com website. And right on the top of the uh, fold there, the top of the website, there's a little green microphone. It says, leave a message. And all you got to do is record a little message, a few seconds, a minute, and tell me what character you want to hear about and maybe why, why do you like this character? And then of course that will be on the show that next week and or a week later. It all depends on where, how, many shows I've already got scheduled and uh, you'll be able to hear your voice on the podcast. So go overhead to the site and check that link out. Well, like I said, I've had a lot of fun doing this show this week. I love the idea of these, these characters that sort of are in the periphery and, you know, they, they provide a very important task, right? They make the weapons and the cool suits and the things that, that make the characters. So These guys are really important, and uh, it was fun to do a show on them. So we'll be back next week. Take care.